Hi, this is Tom Fiddeman at Ventana Systems, and I want to share a little bit of my view of data science as seen from where I live, which is on the simulation side of the fence, working in system dynamics with Vensim and Ventity. I recently saw this article on LinkedIn that wonders how you could put 150 data scientists in a room without anyone willing to volunteer a story about proven business value. Uh, it goes on to explain how that could arise from preoccupation with models and insufficient connection to business questions. And I think that's exemplified by this view of data science as kind of a uh, food chain from collection to decisions, but in which the uh, models are uninformed by the questions being asked and may also be black boxes and uh, where reporting is the uh, mechanism for informing decision making. Here's a richer view that I like a little bit better and my part of the world highlighted there. Uh, but this still implies a bit of a uh, supply chain originating with data and transactional quality issues and building up from there to derive meaning from the data. And that's not always how it works. Uh, there are often times when it's a two-way chain. Sometimes we have uh, measurements and we try to make sense of them, but other times we have strategic plans, hypotheses, mental models that we want to test against the data. And, of course, we'd like to do that without uh, indulging in confirmation bias or false certainty. So now I'll build up my view of the universe in several layers. Um, it starts with this supply chain view of the problem. You collect some data, you build a model to interpret it. So it's a process of constructing structure, testing it against the data uh, to get vetted structure. Once you have some confidence in what you're doing, you run policy experiments, which generate insights and inform your decisions. But actually, one of the first things we learn in system dynamics is that your decisions ought to be informing what you're doing in the first place. If you don't start with a question, you don't know what data to collect, and you don't know where to draw the boundary around the structure that you're trying to build to interpret it. Of course, uh, it's not just the data that's vetting the model. The model's also vetting the data, so as you run tests, like as not, you discover that uh, the data are deficient somehow. It, uh, either they're integrity problems or more likely it just doesn't mean what people think it means. And you may find that as you're trying to span a uh, system, when you describe the uh, business or the uh, public policy situation that there are bits of data that are missing and you need to go back and get more. Once you get further into testing, you can uh, exploit the data not only to vet the model, but also to uh, start informing the outputs. You can use it to establish confidence bounds on your parameters, and that in turn is input for doing things like Monte Carlo simulation that give you insights about risk to inform your decisions, as well as uh, just ordinary insight about dynamics of the problem. Optimization also plays an important role. You can use it both to improve your policies and in a stochastic optimization to improve your policies under uncertainty. After all, we're trying to make good decisions. And it also has an important uh, contribution to testing because the optimizer will ruthlessly exploit any weaknesses in your model structure and reveal problems and model data correspondence. One decision you can make with the model is actually uh, to guide the collection of data in the first place. Collection and cleaning of data is usually pretty expensive in our projects. Uh, so running simulations to see what it's worth to have more information about some aspect of the system can actually save you a lot of money if it turns out that a particular uh, line of data doesn't really make any difference to the outcome or the decisions that you'd make. 
One way to do that is to synthesize the data that you lack, which you can do with the model that you're building. Uh, and that way you can determine whether your calibration measurement strategies are even going to work before you put them to the test on real data. It's also important to note here that uh, synthetic data and real data are not the only sources of information. There are lots of other in information streams that can go into a model, subject matter expertise, prior knowledge about how the system works. That's often where the connection to the uh, business problem really comes home because you may have a piece of the model that you calibrate from data, but ultimately, uh, let's say you connect that description of consumer behavior or whatever it is to a cost structure. And you don't necessarily get the cost structure from data. Obviously, you populate it with some real accounting numbers, but really you get that from an operational understanding of how the firm works. Then uh, the vetting of the model is actually not primarily from data. That's a weak test. The strong tests are things like extreme condition tests, uh, dimensional consistency, consistency with physical laws like conservation of people and money, and then you often have uh, prior information that you can use uh, about uh, parameter values or behavior regimes uh, so that you can be a good Bayesian as you go through this process. And finally, all of this needs to be embedded in some double loop learning processes in which you track and evaluate the results and use that information to refine mental models, communicate with decision makers, find out how the tools are meeting their needs, and revise them to meet that, and maybe even refine the uh, goals of the organization. And if uh, all this sounds like a lot of work, just remember that it's also a lot of fun. In a way, it's the essence of life and learning. Um, you can manage the complexity by starting simple, and you don't have to make perfect decisions. You're just trying to improve on the decisions that are already being made. And of course, the payoff is enormous. If you can manage this process well, it conveys a huge sustainable competitive advantage on organizations. And one of the crucial organizations that needs this is planet Earth.